okay, I'm good. Let's go! Gravity is a downward pulling force in the direction of the centre of the earth that is always present. This force acts on every body and thing through an imaginary point we call the centre of gravity. Centre of gravity can be defined as the single point at which all parts of an object are equally balanced. If we stand upright, generally the centre of gravity will lie around the navel, where there would be an equal weight on the left and right side of the body, therefore balancing the body out. However, the human body is constantly changing shape, consequently shifting the centre of gravity according to the positioning and movement of the individual's body and limbs. Centre of gravity is important as it helps to achieve balance and stability, which are fundamental factors to the execution of a strong and controlled volleyball serve. Being unbalanced or unstable could result in a weak ball toss angle, increased chance of falling over, a heightened error to the direction of forces involved, and a loss of control through the serve. Good levels of balance and stability during a volleyball serve rely on three necessary dynamics – centre of gravity, line of gravity, and base of support. The height of the centre of gravity plays a vital role in conjunction with the base of support, in that the closer the centre of gravity is to your base of support, the more stable and steady you become. The line of gravity branching from your centre of gravity allows for greater stability when it runs closer to the centre of the base of support. If this line starts directing out towards the edge of the base of support, the less stable the body is going to be through the serve, with a greater chance of falling over. And finally, the wider the base of support, the more stable the body is going to be for the serve. If our feet stay too close together, there is more chance for the body to become unbalanced, causing errors or falls through the serve. Alright, so now that we looked at that centre of gravity, let's give it a shot. Yep. So we've had our feet a lot further apart than before. Just like this? Yeah, that's good. And then let's try not to lean back too yeah. much and concentrate on our centre of gravity coming down through the middle. Yeah, I feel a lot better. You yep. just want me to give it a shot or? Yeah, give it a go. Oh yes, got it!
Thanks for your advice, Georgina. It really helped me when I got my second serve over it. But I struggled with my first and third serve, so I second need someone to help. Do you have any more ideas or...? Whilst Harley was serving, I noticed lack of power in his hits. Although he was keeping his centre of gravity central, he was lacking his freedom of motion and was not winding his arm up for the hit. His lack of build-up is causing Harley difficulty to add power and force to his serve, resulting in an inability to successfully make it over the net. Harley, I can see how using that centre of gravity to help maintain stability through your serving. Yeah. I'd like to suggest though, maybe if you wind up a bit more, maybe pull your arm back and open up your body. By doing this, you gain more power through means of inertia. So, by using the momentum, when we hit the ball, there'll be a bigger transfer of power yeah. and it'll get further over the net and higher, higher off the ground. Awesome. Let's go practice. Feel so close to you right now. It's a force field. In your serving, you're still very stiff. By allowing your body to continue the motion that is initiated through your serving, you will be able to exert more power into the ball, as opposed to tensing up when you try and counteract the follow through. In stopping yourself from following through, you've created unnecessary resistance to motion that you have just created. So, how will this help me gain distance over the net? By allowing yourself to follow through, you are helping develop your summation of forces. Much like when, you, when we wind up to create power to hit the ball, you need to use follow through to help carry that motion forward with the ball. In doing this, you'll be able to gain more height and distance through your serves. Alright, Harley, so first we need to focus on pulling that arm back and really winding up to the hit. Yep. So, what I'm going to get you to do is throw it up, big one, hit. Okay. Make sense? Yep. I'll show you one more time. Yep, that's looking good. I feel that can help me a lot when yeah, I'm serving. Really wind back, use our whole body. Yep. Um, secondly, I'd like you to think about doing the big follow through, getting that arm right around, um, and sending that ball right over the net. So, I'll give you a demonstration. Right, 
that. Yep. Okay, cool. Just bring that arm right around. In our time with Harley, we have looked at improving his serving, but we must also consider the psychology behind his playing skills. An example of this is a self-determination theory. This theory focuses on extrinsic and intrinsic motivation and meeting the needs of autonomy, confidence and relatedness. In the constraints we have used to help Harley improve his serving, we have increased Harley's self-determination and motivation. Intrinsic motivation can be defined as a natural inherent drive to seek out challenges and new possibilities. It involves engaging in behaviour because it is personally rewarding, essentially performing an activity for its own sake rather than a desire for some external reward. Extrinsic motivation refers to motivation that comes from an outside individual. Uh, the motivating factors are external or outside rewards such as money or grades. Examples of extrinsic motivation include studying because you want to get a good grade, cleaning room to avoid getting in trouble for it by your parents, um, or participating in a sport in order to win. By trying to improve his serving in order to qualify for his school team, Harley has become extrinsically motivated. This is due to his focus on the result of improving his playing. To change his focus, we implemented the game constraints to help stimulate intrinsic motivation by using constraints to help Harley want to serve in a particular way in order to play the game. Harley is aiming to serve into a particular segment of the court rather than, rather than having to serve to get into a better team. Additionally, by using this constraint with the help of advice from others, Harley is also creating more successful shots that are then motivating him to keep playing for the enjoyment of success rather than a particular result. Through getting Harley to focus on intrinsic motivation, he will find more enjoyment in training and gameplay and will develop his, through, his skills through experience. By helping make Harley aware of the biomechanical principles, he is able to self-adjust his serving technique in order to grow and develop his skills. In doing this, he is able to find autonomy, relatedness and confidence in his training and gameplay which will also intrinsically motivate him to improve. He has become more autonomous by being able to complete the task on his own. The task has become more relatable through his increased understanding of serving and he has become more confident at creating successful serves. Through helping Harley understand serving more and providing game constraints that influence Harley's playing style, we are able to motivate him to find more success and enjoyment out of his playing. This will not only help him achieve his external goals, but also help him to internally succeed in the support. Harley's center of gravity is leaning a little off to the back of his base of support and his feet are too close together, causing an unstable serve and a lack of any power or direction through the ball when he hits. By leaning backwards, Harley's ball toss is falling too far away from his body and causing a poor arm angle coming into the serve, in turn making it harder for Harley to hit the ball with any force. This constraint looks at the positioning of his feet and base of support during that ball toss in conjunction with the ball toss placement also. Harley is to check his base of support and foot placement and toss the ball as high as a serve but let it fall to the ground. The ball should fall near the spot on the floor just inside of the lead foot and in line with the hitting shoulder. As the toss falls into the area marked out and Harley's confidence with ball toss placement improves, Harley can start hitting the ball to perform the entire serve. However, if the ball toss lands outside of the area, then Harley should let the ball toss fall to the ground and try again. In this first constraint, Harley is now applying his new knowledge of center of gravity to concentrate on improving his ball toss heading into the serve. We can now see Harley has corrected the lean back to a more central gravity position, a more upright stance, and his base of support is a lot wider and more stable. After a few attempts, Harley's ball toss begins to land in the correct position in front of his lead foot, and with practice, Harley's ball toss is improving and looking more natural. Harley is learning to take this constraint into a game situation as when his ball toss doesn't feel in the right position heading into the serve, he can allow the ball to hit the ground and start again. As Harley wasn't completing a full arm follow through during the serve, he was losing momentum and forward forces to the ball, causing a lack of power, which was resulting in the ball falling short of the net. 
This second constraint is going to look at addressing the lack of power and subsequently work towards driving the ball over the net and into play. On the receiving side of the volleyball court to Harley serve, there will be cones splitting the court into thirds. The closest third to the net is worth 5 points, the middle third is worth 20 points, and the furthest third is worth 50 points. Harley has to try and accumulate 200 points while being timed. By using his newly acquired ball toss and foot placement skills, the incentive to beat the times previously recorded for 200 points are going to be used to encourage Harley to serve the ball harder and reach the highest scoring thirds on the court. In this constraint, Harley is now understanding how to implement a better arm follow through to encourage more power to his serve. This constraint involves keeping Harley motivated to keep serving hard through the use of a scoring system on the receiving side. If Harley hit too soft, the ball would fall into the bottom third and Harley would only receive 5 points. He began intrinsically motivating himself to hit harder through the serves in order to gain more points. As the constraint continued, Harley's serves eventually began to find the middle or higher end score of 20 and 50 a lot more consistently and naturally. Proving that the use of marked scoring areas was motivating Harley to execute more powerful and confident serves. Due to this constraint using the receiving side of the volleyball court, Harley can visualise and aim for these areas when he steps into a game situation, enabling Harley to target the same areas for a more powerful and improved serve on court. Congratulations! You know, I think my work here is done. Good luck with your trials tomorrow. Thanks, Billy. I'm really confident that I'll be able to get into the ATM. I'll ring you, I'll give you a call and let you know, though. Yeah, keep me posted. No problem. Thank you for all your help. Through Harley's time working on his serve, he has shown significant improvement. In the beginning, Harley was leaning back too much, not performing a strong follow through, had a closed off base of support and stability system, and was lacking motivation with his serving ability. After learning about centre of gravity, Harley is now applying this knowledge to remain in a more centrally balanced stance that's keeping him a lot more stable as he performs his serve. Harley is also remembering to maintain a wider base of support to hold himself through the serve better. After also bringing attention to his follow through arm, Harley is beginning to execute a more full serve and is seeing a greater increase of power and movement through his serve and the ball. Before we started working on Harley's serve, his main struggle was getting the ball over the net and into play. The constraints Harley has been implementing have overridden the issue of his foot and ball placement, as well as motivating Harley to a better level of power when serving. The constraints saw Harley's confidence advance and diminish his fears of the ball falling short of the net, as we now see Harley's serve is comfortably clearing the net each time. Now Harley's serve is balanced, powerful and confident, and during a game, the constraints that we used are still valid to Harley and will continue to assist him when he comes to perform his ball toss as well as his use of power in getting the ball over the net. Come back, I've got to help. 